What's up YouTube? Today I have the 10x rule by Grant Cardone. And um, it's one of the, you know, lovely books on uh, finance and success and self-help and motivation and all those together in, in one book. And um, I, I like this book, especially the audio version, because Grant Cardone himself is reading it and, you know, he's shouting and his weird accent is uh, real lovely and funny. I like his energy, his enthusiasm. However, I don't know what is he selling. You know, he's a guy who is supposed to be a salesperson that makes seminars and write books and makes courses and YouTube channels and TV shows. And I still don't know what, what is he selling. You know, I still don't know. But however, the book has some intriguing concepts. And again, just like all the books before it, it has some ideas. If you find something useful for you, use it, take it. If not, leave it. I found some good things I used to believe in, and he just kind of remind me of it. So let's take a couple of ideas. First, have 10x goals and 10x actions required to achieving these goals. All right, there was a quote that I heard in the past saying, make your goal to be the moon and try really hard to reach it. And if you did not reach it and fell, at least you'll fall amongst the, sky, uh, the stars. And this quote, as I think about it often, it's really good. The, the, the meaning behind it is efficient. However, it's kind of reversed because the stars are above the moon. This quote wants to say, um, make your goal really, really high and try to reach it. If you did not reach that goal and fell, you will fall still in, in some place that is high. But if you think about it, uh, scientifically, the skies, the, the stars are so high, they are high, higher than the moon. So make your goal to be the stars. And if you did not reach the stars, you'll fall on the moon. You'll be the man on the moon. Uh, whatever the, the quote, you, you get what I want to say. So the concept is to make your goal very, very big. You know, if we are dreaming, if we are um, thinking about something we want, why not thinking the biggest thing, the highest thing? So if you want to, for example, get a score in an exam, why not getting 100%? Why not acing the entire exam and studying really hard, which is the second part I'm going to talk about. Studying really hard to ace this exam, taking all the courses and, you know, you take sleepless night and you stay awake and you study and solve problems and exams and so on. And then your, your goal is always to get 100. And if you did not get 100, you'll get like 99, 98, 7, 5, still in the stars. Does that make sense? You're still very, very good. So pick a very, very big goal that pushes you, that motivates you. If your goal is to have, for example, um, $10,000 a month, why not make it $100,000 $100, a month? And then you might not achieve that goal. So which one would you would you rather? Would you rather not achieve the $10,000 or would you rather not achieve the $100,000? Even if you came up short and not achieving your goals, you'll be much better. You will be considered as a star if you fail to achieve the much, much larger goal, which is the first idea. Have very, very big goals and try really, really hard to reach them. The second thing is to have 10 times action. So if your goal is to have $10,000, we said let's make it 100. So 10x that number. And if you think you need to study for one hour, make it 10 hours, all right? Because you might not, and it's kind of very, very difficult to study for 10 hours every day. So how many hours would you, would you study? Eight, seven, six, five hours? Still a lot. Still very, very good. So make the effort 10x. Make the effort very, very big. And try to, to maintain any of that effort. You know, even if you studied for like three hours every day, still very big and more than most people. So make the, the effort really, really big. If your goal, for example is to get six packs or to have fit body and your goal is to exercise for 30 minutes why not making it exercising for three hours right you're not going to exercise for three hours every day so you're going to exercise for what two hours an hour and a half one hour every day still very very good so find something that you want to achieve and expect that it will take more than what you think because most of us underestimate what our goals will take. We'll say, for example, I want to buy a couple of things, right? And I have the exact amount of money for buying these things. And then I go to buy them. And it turns out I need to buy some more and there are some extra things. So I need more money. Same thing goes for the things that you want to accomplish. It will take more effort than you initially thought. So plan in advance 
10x effort, all right? Expect that you will need to study for 10 hours and exercise more and lift more weights and eat more food and save more money and invest more and start more. More effort equals recent or decent result. And moderate effort equals very low resort. Uh, low result. So think about that for a while. Then create your own luck. All right, they say the harder I work, the luckier I get. You look at someone that is the best in their uh, of their field. You look at LeBron James in basketball. You look at Tiger Woods in uh, golf. You look at uh, Ronaldo in, in football. And you think, wow, they, they must be very lucky. You know, they're talented and they got into this place, but you did not see the amount of hours and thousands of hours and fail attempts that they have made, you know? They have failed more than anyone else. And one of the, the greatest basketball players of all time, Michael Jordan said, I failed more than everyone and I missed many three shots and, and uh, f lost many games. This is why I succeeded, because he tried the most. As we've mentioned before in the, the book Outliers, most of the experts who became expert at something studied for 10,000 hours in one specific field, like the Beatles, for example, and Bill Gates and so on. You have not seen these 10,000 hours, like studying for um, five, six hours every day for five or seven years or more. Or more. You, you did not see that. That was boring. But that what made them unique, that what made them experts and masters of their field right next we move on to fear some people define fear as false events appearing real this is a definition for courageous people in my opinion because what you see in life is only in perception is what you perceive as we all know nothing in this life is real right it's all going to end is all going to fade away with your death and that's imminent and that's going to happen so would you rather live an unfulfilled coward life you know what let me be honest you want to do a lot of things but you don't have the courage to pursue it all right if you are dead serious about your goals you are going to pursue them no matter what you are not going to care about criticism about your age about your country about your finance about your emotions uh, and you are just going to to break through it if you really believe in your goal if you have something that you really really want to you're going to fight for it and you're going to ignore fear even though it's real, but you're going to say it false events appearing real. You're going to say to yourself, it's not real. I can do it. I will do it. And you will. And, and then you will be thankful for what you've done. The last idea is don't compete, dominate. Listen to this. There is a quote that says, hard work beats talent when talent does not work hard. They say that if you have someone who is really, really smart and someone who's normal, and the normal person studies every day for five or six hours and taking the exams and taking it seriously, and the smart person does not study at all, sometimes studies for like a couple of minutes and sometimes does not. Who will succeed eventually and who will become uh, successful in, in, in study and in life? Most of the time, the hardest worker is the person that is going to outlast that lazy guy because that lazy, smart, talented guy is going to apply the same lazy mentality on every aspect of life. Lazy at school, lazy in career, lazy in pursuing a spouse, lazy in living a life, lazy in exercise, lazy in everything. However, what if we have a hard worker that is talented? What if hard work meets talent? This is something you you can only have if you really, really dig deeper to find your talent. If you have a talent, if you have something that you're really good at and you do 10x effort in this thing, you will become dominant. You will become the best in the world in this thing. But if you don't have a talent, if you don't have something that's unique about you, find something that you really love and you can do this 10x rule because, you know, let's be honest, the, the only way that make you do this effort in, in something is that you really, really like it. Find this thing and if you found it and you put that 10x rule, uh, the 10x uh, effort in it, you will become excellent in it. If you did not become world class, if you did not uh, reach to the stars, at least you'll fall on the moon. You'll be the man on the moon. You'll be great at whatever you do. So have 10x goals, have 10x rule, have actions that match these goals and keep pursuing, keep pursuing and luck will come to you. Luck comes with effort and find your talent and do the effort 
to master this talent. And if you don't find your talent, talent is overrated anyways. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.